Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. First, I want to I want to thank our leadership. Thank you, Pastor, for asking me to preach today. Um, I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. Aren't you? Right. I'll start out with a bit of prayer. Lord Jesus, I ask your anointing upon this vessel, Lord God. Help quench, Lord Jesus, the flesh of this vessel, Lord God, so that your anointing can take over and preach the word that you've instilled in me, Lord God. Allow your words to come through these lips and this tongue, Lord God, so that they may touch your people, Lord Jesus. And let your words, Lord Jesus, move in this place. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. So I got a question for you all. Now, I don't expect an answer. This is kind of rhetorical. Has anyone ever gotten lost? I'm sure that'd probably be yes for every single person in here, right? Well, a while back, um, many of you have mentioned that I, I pr many of you have heard me mention that I pray walk. And for some reason, I love being outside. I love being outside and just being in nature and talking to God and just walking and talking with him just like he's standing next to me and walking down the pathway with me. So one night, I was walking our neighborhood. Now, this was a, a little while ago, and we were new to our neighborhood. So I knew our block, and I knew a couple blocks over and that, but I had started this pathway and started walking, and for some reason, reason the... I was so into prayer that I ended up in this area that I, I looked around and I like I didn't recognize where I was at. And I'm walking and I'm still talking to God and kind of doing one of these things as I'm talking to God because I want to finish what he wanted to pray through me. And all of a sudden I realized that I was lost. And I had no clue of how to get home. So what, what, is most, what do most people do? They pull out this, right? and you try to find home. Guess what? I left it at home. <laughs> so, you know, we, this is a wonderful thing. When it's charged and it's ready to go, or you actually bring it with you. And you know, the GPS will help you find your way, correct? You want to find a place to go to. You got an appointment to go to, you've never been there. You put it in there, and it will get you there. And it'll tell you turn by turn and everything like that. Well, didn't help me that night because it wasn't home. So I began to wonder, okay, now how am I gonna get home? Because I'm totally lost. And I began to think, well, excuse me, but I got the Holy Ghost in me, right? I've got Jesus right here because I've been praying and talking to him this whole time. So Lord, I, I so I began to say, Lord, help me get home. <laughs> however, if you want me out here, however long you want me out here, I will be out here praying and talking to you. So that's exactly what I did. Just continued to walk and talking to him and praying at the top of my lungs at times. And all of a sudden, as I asked him to find me home, all of a sudden I got to a street that I recognized. And I'm like, oh, that's the traffic light that I usually see. And I got my way home. Because Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the HGPS was in force. The Holy Ghost positioning system, Holy Ghost, help me get home. Okay? Now, a lot of times we think about the Holy Ghost that, you know, when, when we are given it, you know, we realize that, oh gosh, we can speak in tongues, we can communicate with him. We know that the Holy Ghost is given to us so that we have better understanding of the things of God, correct? We do. And that's what we need to think about when we think about this particular story that, that I just said. But in the spiritual realm, what do we do? So I'm going to say that the title of my message is HGPS, the Holy Ghost Positioning System. So let's start with 1 Corinthians, second chapter, verses 9 through 16. turn there but as it is written I have not seen nor ear hath heard neither have entered into the heart of man 
the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, preparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So, we know that, I'm going to go back here a little bit. We know that the, the Spirit of the Lord is instilled in us for many, many things, correct? Number one, we, we, it gives us understanding when we read the Word, does it not? Those of you who are filled with the Holy Ghost, which I believe is everyone in this place, when you read God's word, doesn't he, when you ask him to, reveal things that is specifically for you? Correct? You know, how many times have we seen over the pulpit, wow, I've read that. That is new. God kind of snuck a new one in on, there on me. When it comes to his word, we're reading, and all of a sudden, like, it's like this light that opens up, and we see this new vision of what that word really means and how we can apply it to ourselves. Do we not? Yes. And it is that which helps the Holy Ghost within us then guide us because it'll guide us into things that we need from God. Number one, those of us that are called to ministry, I, I can tell you I rely on the Holy Ghost. I rely on God to show me what to do next, who to speak to, don't you? When God gives you a word or a door of utterance to speak to somebody, he gave it to Kathy today, right, to speak to her daughter. That's a door of utterance. But you know what? It was the Holy Ghost that led that. It was the guidance system and the Holy Ghost leading her into, okay, open your mouth and I will give you the words to say this person. Because it is that which we need, the Holy Ghost within us, to be able to move from place to place and into positions that God wants us at, whether it is an appointment like Kathy had today with her daughter, whether it is in a position that God has for you in a church. And, but you know what? That, it doesn't come automatically. As pastor says, he's going to look at those that are, number one, utilizing the Holy Ghost, utilizing those things within the Spirit that we need to be able to move ourselves to that next level of relationship with God right? And it's with that re relationship with God that we move from realm to realm, and we learn from the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, and we have seen that throughout this church, throughout this year, throughout the years that we have been here. We have seen that laid upon the foundation of what we need to do to move forward in our walk with God, and for those of us that are in ministry, where God wants us to be and what he wants us to do. So the Holy Ghost will, number one, give you knowledge and truth. Discover the revelations of the infilling of the Holy Ghost because it's those revelations that he will give to you when you read his word and when you ask for his help and you ask him to lead you. It will lead you straight into the perfect will of God for your life. For your life. Your, the will of God for your life is different than mine. 
right? My anointing is different than all of yours. Your anointing is different than mine. I cannot compare mine to yours, right? I can't compare my walk with God to your walk with God because we have different relationships at different levels with our creator. So he will also lead us to a relationship with him that is far greater than anything that this world has to offer, right? Because we don't rely on the things of this world as it's said in previous things in this particular scripture. We can't because it's not comparison. We are in the spiritual realm. And we are, we are people of God that trust in the Holy Ghost that is within us. And it is that Holy Ghost, it is that Holy Ghost that is going to lead you to that next phase of your life, to the next step in relationship with God, to the next step in your ministry for God. He's going to give you the words that you need, as he did with Sister Kathy today. And anybody here that could sit there and testify about how many times God has led them to an appointment with a person so that they could finally share what they've been wanting to share with that individual for probably years. You know, for some of us, maybe decades, you know, that we've been witnessing to our families. And God can open those doors if you realize that the Holy Ghost will move you into that position, that position that will give you power. Because Jesus said, what? He will give us power. After that, he leaves, and it's the Holy Ghost within us that creates that power within us. And we have that power as long as we follow what God wants us to do with that power. You know, and we're in a year of power. We are in a year that we need to pay attention to because it is that which will lead us to that next area of what God wants us to do. So if you walk in it, you will find the relationship with God that you have always wanted, filled with love, filled with forgiveness, not only for yourself, but for others around you. If you walk in the love of God that fills you, think about this. The God of creation lives in you. The God, Jesus, that walked on this earth, that performed all those miracles that we read about, is in you. And if he is in you, you can rely on him because, number one, he is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, we talk, we've learned about a lot about faith on Sunday. And it is through the word of God that our faith grows. But, you know, it is that, as Pastor said, it is that faith that he gives us that perfect amount in each of us. And all of us have the same amount. And it's that faith that will help us as we read the word of God, as we depend on the Holy Ghost that is within us to lead us from one station to the next, to our next level of fellowship with him, a fellowship with each other as a church. But we have to depend on that Holy Ghost within us to be able to bring us to that new realm and relationship with him. If you are called into the ministry, it is the only way to find the position God has for you in Basilea. It is. So I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 14. If filled with the Holy Ghost, it will. Follow this. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So, if so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, with, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I want to say that again. If you do not have the Spirit of Christ in you, the Holy Ghost, you don't belong to him. That, that is a strong statement, but it says it right there. The pastor said it one time. He said, I can't help it. It's right there. It's right there. I don't know if I did it as loud as you did. <laughs> um, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead, this, because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. We only have righteousness because God's presence, God is within us, and he, it is his righteousness that is within us. 
It is not ours because ours is like filthy rags, is it not? It is his that will lead us to that next relationship step with him. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells within you. Okay, now think about this. If you do not have the spirit of God in you, where are you going? Can you be raptured? You need the, the spirit of God in you for you to be quickened and your mortal bodies be changed. Because if you don't have that, you cannot be part of the bride of Christ. You can't because you won't be taken up. So think about this. Holy Ghost position position. So that, okay, if I want to get there, I need to follow the Holy Ghost. And I need to follow and listen to him. Because he will eventually, because he's in me, if I follow him, if I change my relationship with him, if I grow with him in my relationship he will eventually, when the time comes and that trumpet sounds, I'm going up with the church. I'm going up with the bride. And I am looking forward to that day, as many of you are. So, therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, to mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. Now, I looked up that do mortify. You know what it means? To make, to die, destroy, or render extinct. So we need to let this be destroyed so that the spiritual part of us that is connected with God, our souls that are connected with God, with the Holy Ghost that is living within you, can live and continue to live with him. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Think about that. Again, he's saying, if you do not have the Spirit of God leading you within you, okay, again, Holy Ghost positioning is system. He is going to use that Holy Ghost to lead you to, so that you are led by the Holy Ghost, so that you become the sons of God. For we, ye, have not received the spirit of bondage, again, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, Abba, Father. Oh, I think I went one too many. Sorry about that. Um, it says, our led, in verse 14. Now listen to this. In verse 14, our led means to lead by accompanying to a place or into a place. To lead you, to accompany you to a place. Now that could be the final destination that we all want to go to. Or it could be, number one, that next step in your relationship with God. That next step in the position that God has called you to. That next step that he will put you in, in that position that he wants you in, so that you are open and ready to open your mouth and allow the door of utterance, whether it's behind the pulpit or whether it's in an airport. We're all going to be going to the airport soon. We're all going to be on planes soon. Wait for that door of utterance because there's a reason why you're traveling when you are. There's a reason why you're going to this conference. And you know what you need to do is accept the Holy Ghost and allow him to lead you and to show you where you need to be. Be open to the Holy Ghost because if you are not, you're not doing what God's will is for your life. Because once he puts that Holy Ghost in you, he wants to lead you. He wants to bring you to that next step in relationship with him. He wants to lead you to a place with him that you have never, ever experienced before. God is good, is he not? None of this will occur if we do not adhere to what God's perfect will is for us. And that can be found if we listen to the guidance we have because of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Where are we going to find our guidance? 
God's word. And it's the Holy Ghost that will help us to understand that guidance. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. And Lord God, I hope, Lord Jesus, Lord God, that you, Lord God, let us walk away from this and understand it better because the Holy Ghost is within us, Lord God. And it is that, Lord God, which will help us understand what this word, Lord God, means to each of us. Lord God, whether I'm just preaching to myself, Lord God, or if there's someone in this audience or someone out there that needs to hear, Lord God, what the Holy Ghost really means in our lives and what it can do, Lord God, because it is you living within us, Lord my God, my King. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you have for us. Thank you, Pastor. I'm thankful for a man of God that prayed over me. I'm thankful for a pastor that prays over this church. That day gave me access to things I never imagined. That day for you gave you access to things you could have never imagined. It, the Holy Ghost does so much for us. He leads us and he guides us and he gives us comfort and joy and he gives us peace that passes all understanding. Recently, that's been a word that God has just been putting in my heart and it's the word peace. And I've been hearing it for weeks and he's been giving my family some opportunity to get to know what that peace really is. And I began to say, Lord, I need you to show me what this peace is. And how can I access it every day when I need it? Because I don't know about you, but there have been some times walking through the valley or walking through tribulation where I've cast all my cares before the Lord, but I don't feel that peace. Am I the only one who's ever been there before? I don't feel the peace because I know that those circumstances are still around me. But the Lord has been speaking to me, and he wanted to show me the key. So the title of this message is called The Key to Peace. And we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That is one of the greatest promises we could have received. That we have the promise that the peace of God, which passes our own understanding, will keep my heart and my mind, no matter what I'm facing, it's going to keep it on him. But for those moments that we have this promise and we still don't feel it, I want to go back to verse 6 and point something out that I never actually noticed before in this verse. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unknown unto God. Thanksgiving is the key to your peace. Thanksgiving is the key to your peace. You are to bring your needs before the throne with thanksgiving. It's as easy as that. Not to bring your needs before the throne with doubt. Not to bring your needs before the throne with worry or anxiety and stress. But to bring your needs with thanksgiving and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thanksgiving is the key, not your worry, not your doubt, not how holy you are and how much time you spend in prayer, because it says you can bring your needs in with prayer and supplication, but you need to bring it with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Why is this so important? Why is this the key to our peace? Because thanksgiving is the voice of your faith. Thanksgiving is the voice of your trust in God. Thanksgiving is the act of crucifying your flesh and saying, Lord, I don't understand why I have to walk through this, but thank you for allowing it to come into my life. Thank you for allowing it to teach me something. Thank you for allowing it to grow in me and to show me that you have greater things for me. Thank you. Thank you. That is how we should start every prayer, is thanking him first. 
That's something I've had to get a grip on is instead of saying, Lord, I need you to do A, B, and C. It's, Lord, thank you for A, B, and C. Though I may not understand it, I know you have a greater plan for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanksgiving is the voice of your faith. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. Why is your thanksgiving important? Because it's showing God that you've put your trust in him, and so he grants you perfect peace because your mind is staying on him. Peace is a gift to those who trust him. And it's not meant to be a momentary part of relief in your life. The gift of peace is not something for you to pick up once in a while when you need it. But the Lord intended peace to be a part of your daily walk each and every day. Each and every day. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3 and let's go to 15. And let the peace of God Rule in your hearts. That word rule means govern. So let the peace of God govern your heart. To the which also ye are called in one body. Did you know that you are called to let the peace of God rule in your heart? Look at that. And be thankful. And be thankful. So not only should we be thankful for the circumstances we're walking through, but we should be thankful for the fact that he's going to grant us peace. And not just any peace. It's a peace that can rule in your heart to where you never have to feel the effects of the tribulation. You never have to feel the effects of your circumstances. It's a peace that passes all understanding. So even when you can't explain it, even when you're in turmoil and you feel that peace about you, you may not understand it, but it's a gift of God that is meant to be a part of every day of your life. I want to go to verse 17. And it says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, so no matter what you say or whatever you do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So if you haven't caught on, your thanksgiving is so important when it comes to receiving the promise of God, of the peace of God in your heart and in your mind and in your body and in your soul. Where is your thanksgiving today? Where is your thanksgiving today? Our ultimate goal, as we all know, is to know him more every day. I never want to be satisfied with the amount that I know God intimately. I never want to say, oh, I know Jesus forward and backward. I know what he's going to do tomorrow. No, no, no. We should every day strive to have a better relationship with our bridegroom. And he wants peace for you more than you want it for yourself. Our flesh gets comfortable in the turmoil at times because If we have peace, what are we to think about if we can't think about our trials right now? If we have peace, I can't worry about my finances, and then what am I going to do with my day? Think about it. Think about it. If you didn't have to worry about anything ever again, where would your thoughts be? Where would your thoughts be? My God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. No, this is not Christmas. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is peace. He is our peace. The closer you get to him, the more you will receive peace. Hallelujah. He came to this world to give you salvation. He came to this world to be your wonderful counselor and mighty God and everlasting father. But he came to bring the world 
peace. Peace. That was one of the purposes of Jesus being born in a manger and sacrificing himself on the cross is so that you could have peace that passes all understanding. He was that peace. He is that peace. And it is available to you every day. Every day, no matter what your circumstances are. Every day. John chapter 14 and verse 27 little bit of a background. This is during the Last Supper, and Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace that he has given us and that he left for us is not something you're going to find in your job. It is not something you're going to find in your spouse. It is not something you're going to find in your friendships. It is something you can only find by becoming closer to Jesus Christ. I don't know if you knew this, but the verse right before is talking about the Holy Ghost. The reference of peace is talking about the Holy Ghost. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you have access to this peace whenever you need it. All you have to do is use the key. Use the key. The Holy Ghost gives us access to many things. But I can't believe it took me 26 years to actually realize that the Holy Ghost is what gives you access to your peace. There are many in this world who do not have the Holy Ghost and think they have found peace because they fill the void with things of this world. But it says it's not what the world gives, but it's what he gives and not to let our hearts be troubled. There's no reason to sit and focus on your problems. There's no reason to sit and focus on your finances. If you are a tither, that alone should give you peace because you have a promise that he will bless you abundantly over and beyond what you can think. It's a peace that passes all understanding. So don't try to figure it out, period. You don't need to figure out why he's given it to you, how he's given it to you, why am I feeling this way? All you have to know is how to access it, and your life is going to be changed forever. He came to to give us a supernatural peace. Supernatural peace, not a carnal one. John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's in him, and it's through his peace that you can overcome the world, that you can overcome your tribulation, that you can have the peace that he's given you access to, but it's only through him. It's truly immersing yourself in who Jesus is. It's truly immersing yourself in the Holy Ghost that is where you find your thanksgiving. If you can't find something in this world to be thankful for, thank him for the fact that you've been given the Holy Ghost. Thank him for the fact that you've been given a church that has given you access. Thank him that you have breath in your lungs today. There is always something to be thankful for. Always, even when you can't see it or feel it, he's blessed you. We sing a song that just popped into my mind. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. All you've done. I'm so blessed and I found rest. Rest. Lord, I give you thanks. That peace that gives you rest, that lets your mind at ease. 
that lets your heart just rest in the power of God. You're so blessed. Thank him for it. That's all you have to do. I want to close with this, and Brother Nate, would you come? What are you thankful for today? Are you in need of some peace this evening? Maybe your family's been going through something one after the other, and you've tried to stay strong, and you put on that face, and everybody knows you're okay, but deep down, you're living in a constant state of stress, Andrew. It's a peace that passes all understanding. We're not called to walk in a constant state of stress. We're not called to be worried about every aspect of our life. We're called to walk in peace. So if that's what you need today, I want everybody up on your feet. If you just need some peace in your mind, And in your heart, I want you to just take a moment and thank him for something. It could be something that's happened today. It could be something that happened in the past. Maybe you'll be an overcomer and you're thanking him for your answer that could happen tomorrow. But find something to thank him for in this moment. Thank him for the breath in your lungs. Thank him for one more day. Thank him for your family, for your pastor, for your assistant pastor, for everybody in this room. Because God placed you here, and that's a bigger blessing that I think most of us can grasp. But if you can just step into that spirit of thankfulness, I guarantee that somebody is going to unlock the door to a supernatural peace in this house. give it all to you and I thank you Jesus. I thank you for the answers that I cannot see. I thank you for the path that you've placed me on. I thank you God that your plan is bigger than mine. That your ways are higher than my ways. God I thank you that you're teaching me something through this. And God I lay it all at your feet. Every care, every doubt, every worry I lay it at your feet. Lord, and I take that peace that you promised to fill my heart, to fill my mind. Holy Ghost, fill this place with your peace. Lord, let somebody walk out from this place changed, God, and at rest.